Lesson 107, this week we're going to be designing an announcement. Notice the title says Announcements and Flyers. I would say that an announcement is a type of flyer, which is just a one-page sign that can be posted or handed out that has information about an event or organization, something that is happening. To prepare you need to do Lesson 107E in your Word Processing Manual. This will demonstrate or help you learn how to move a table, how to add a background page color, which is part of the assignment that we will be doing in Report 10781. There is a note over here on the left for accurate format scoring apply the light grid table style. However, I do your format scoring so I've realized that as long as the alert is talking about format scoring, you don't really need to worry about it. You need to worry about keystroke scoring in GDP. I will take care of scoring your formatting. Okay, you can start work. Use the illustration in your textbook for reference as you work in creating this announcement. The callouts suggest particular font attributes that you should use the first step is to insert word art about the same size and position as the one at the top of the illustration on page 443. Green is a good color for a flyer that's talking about parks and recreation activities, but you can be flexible or use some green and s or some compatible colors to go with it. I think I'm going to choose a green and I'm going to choose this word art style but I'm going to change the shade of it. So as I type in Dade County, let's see how we might change the color on this. For the text fill, we use the word art group. You can choose a darker green color here. Note that you can also choose more fill colors and you have lots of different options for choosing a color for your text. Okay, I've changed the color. I am going to change the shape. Remember we go to Text Effects, Transform. Okay, this is similar to what I used on the cover page. Notice once you have clicked out of editing the text itself, the actual format of the text shows up. Okay, I want to position this. First of all, we're going to set the wrap style. Usually we right click, but this is another way to do this. We want in front of text so we can move it freely on the page. But I also want to position it exactly in the center of the page. So I'm going to use this option, Alignment, Centered, Relative to, and we'll choose Margin this time. We can always adjust the size later if we wish. So now I'll go back and turn Show Hide on so that you will know that I am not making any keystrokes on the page outside of the objects that we're inserting on it. Okay, my next step is going to be to insert word art for Parks and Recreation. Now I want these two word art insertions to be of the same style and color. So I'm going to go back to the text fill. You can do this in any order. Choose my dark green and then we're going to go to effects, transform. I want the bottom arch. Now I want to make sure that the text wrap is set to in front of text. It is. I'm going to position it the center of the page. Move it down to leave room for my clip art. We can always adjust this later once we have inserted our clip art. This time our search needs to be related to parks. Notice the different orientations of the clip art that we're seeing here. These are what we would call portrait. This one is more landscape as is this one and this one. 
And in this document, it is better if we choose a landscape orientation for our clip art of choice. I don't know if we're supposed to know that Dade County is in Florida, but it is, so mountains would not really be appropriate for this. I ended up spending a lot of time on this search trying Florida, Miami, parks, recreation, parks, recreation, beach, going nowhere. So don't, don't waste a lot of time like I did, but just choose something related to parks and we'll go from there. Okay, let's close the clip art pane. The top of this is like, sort of like a letterhead on your sign, identifying the organization behind the activity or event. So it should not take up more than a third of the page. So I'll decrease the size here to about this size. Let's change our wrap to in front of text so we can move it on the page. We can drag it over here under Dade County. Let's turn off Show Hide so that we get a more accurate picture of what the flyer will look like as we're positioning things. Notice this is not exactly as in the textbook, but that's fine. We can change things as we go and later, but this is about the size of the picture I want. Let's choose now under the Picture Tools Format Ribbon a style for our picture. You can look at the effect of different things and choose something you like. It doesn't have to be exactly what is in the book. We'll go with something a little more like what is in the book. Let's be sure that we have this positioned in the center of the page and then we can make some adjustments with sizing. If we want to increase the arch, we do it this way. And remember, it doesn't have to be exactly what's in the book, so let's work on the top now. You can bring it down a little. Let's change the font size and see if we can get a bigger wrap around the picture. You may find that things are a little difficult to move, even though we have the correct settings for moving freely on the page. So I'm going to be satisfied with this for now and move on to the next step. And now we're ready for the word art, which is the main title of the page or the announcement, Youth Sport Activities. I'm going to do something similar to on the page there. Word art is going to be for youth sport activities. I'm going to use the pop-up menu to increase my font size. We'll stick with 48 for the moment and see how that works. We're going to position it centered on the page horizontally. And we're going to apply a shape. Word art, text effects, transform. The style demonstrated in the book is, I believe it is deflate. Notice there are some other similar options here. Deflate the bottom. I think I'll just go with this one. Okay, I'm going to darken that text to a darker green. It's the darkest in our accent three. Even though it goes from 48 to 72 in the choices here, we can type in a number. Okay, we can get a little larger than 48 and still stay on one line. Notice that you can increase the size also by selecting the box and dragging the actual text box size larger, or it's a word art box size. Okay, let us get a better look at the page as a whole so we can see how we're doing here. Youth Sports Activities is just above what I would call the half mark on the page. So we're ready to insert a three column, nine row boxed table. Go to the insert menu, click table, insert table, three columns, nine rows. Notice how it was inserted at the top, but that's fine. We're going to select the table and drag it down on the page. This position is fine, and now we're going to zoom in a little to work on filling in the information and formatting that table. Since we want to use Calibri 16 point 
For all entries in the table, we're going to select the entire table and change the font size to 16. The content for the table is found in the middle of page 444 after step 9. So we're going to want to center row 1. Don't worry about applying bold yet because we're going to apply a style and it often will reverse the bolding that you put in with its own formatting that is automatic so we'll hold off on that. Okay, here I've entered the information in the table. This is going to require a good eye and a lot of good proofreading skills to make sure you get all of the items correct. Then we're going to apply a table style. So move to the Table Tools Design tab. Open the gallery. Let's choose something green. Light shading accent 3 seems to be close to what was applied in the model in the textbook, but you don't have to go with that. I'm going to choose medium shading 1. Let's get the tooltip showing up here. Accent 3. Okay, after applying the style, be sure that all the text in row 1 is bold and in column A. That particular style seems to have applied that just right, so we're all set with that step. Now we're to adjust the column widths automatically. That means apply the auto fit as we've done in the past to tables. So right click, auto fit, auto fit to contents. Now we can center our table horizontally by selecting the entire table. Using our pop-up menu we can click center. And there we have a nice position on our table. Let's zoom back out and get a look at this. Now we need to insert a text box below the table. Insert text box and we want to draw our text box. The model shows it as being about the same width as the table. It can be wider however, so I'm going to start here and see how this works. Now once again, I'm going to want this to be positioned in the center of the page horizontally. Our instructions are for Calibri 16 point font with justified alignment. So let's move here to 16 point font and justified alignment is this one here, control J and we'll type the text required in step 13. Once the text is typed in Calibri 16 point with justified alignment, we're going to apply a border and a texture, both coordinating with the color used in the word art. Let's do that by using the Format Shape tools. If we right click and choose Format Shape, we can set a lot of the options here. For line color, we can choose a solid line or a gradient line and a color of going to go with dark green, the same green that I chose for my fonts in my word art. We can choose a line style. I'm going to choose a bigger width so that it's more visible. I'm going to go even bigger than that and go up to five points on my border. I'm even going to choose a different style here and then go back to the fill. We're going to fill this with a texture. See where it says picture or texture? We can choose our texture here in this dialog box. And we want something that coordinates, but that doesn't mean it has to be green. Tans go with green very well. So I chose what is called stationary. There's some other options here. Parchment looks like it would work. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, I'm going to go with that. It makes the text pop better, I think. All right, can close. And now all that remains is to choose a page color that complements the overall design. So if you did the word manual lesson, you will know that we need to go to page layout, page color, and I'm going to choose a green that is in the same accent column as the dark green that I chose for the font. I'm going to make it the first, the lightest color here in the column. 
And since I have room, I am going to make an adjustment here and move this down just a little bit. I think that looks better not overlapping the shadow so much. Okay, if you are satisfied with everything that you have inserted on the page and are sure that you followed all the checklist suggestions, you're ready to save and submit your document for scoring. Let's get a view of the whole page here. Okay, my error report shows four keystroking errors and these are actually the type of errors that you do need to pay attention to correcting if they show up in your document, at least two of them anyway. Apparently I have a mistake for the U10 Coed Soccer where I have July 18, it should be July 8. And here in the 6 to 14 year olds, I have an extra space inserted. See the two red dots? One extra space there. So I will need to fix those. But here we have a blue paragraph mark indicating that I pressed enter somewhere where I shouldn't have and a green one at the end indicating that I should press enter somewhere where I did not. Now I am not terribly concerned about these. In fact, I am not sure at all where I pressed enter anywhere on the page. So I'm going to take a look at the document and we'll see what we can find. Here I will click edit work. Now notice I'm going to bring up my error report over here so that I can see both. Okay, definitely want to fix July 8 and I want to take out, need to turn on show hide here, take out the extra space here. But the only hard returns that I see on the page are the paragraph mark at the beginning which shows that I did not key anything outside of the items inserted. So this must be in either the table or my text box here and I do not see one at the beginning and I do not see one at the end of the table so I am not sure at all where that is. But this one could be corrected, I believe, by pressing enter after the justified paragraph because while we normally avoid pressing enter at the end of all documents and paragraphs, justified alignment is the exception. It is usually expected so that the bottom line is not stretched across the paragraph. Now since mine wasn't, it did not occur to me that GDP would expect one there. So I could get rid of three errors, but I really don't know where that blue one is, is hiding. I just don't think it's there. So let's see if I can decrease this at least to one error by saving and resubmitting. Okay, yes, I am down to one error and it is still what they are considering a blue paragraph mark indicating that I pressed enter somewhere on the page where I should not have done so. I believe that this is an error on GDP's part and if your flyer or announcement looks good and you have followed all the instructions, don't be concerned if you have even more errors than this that you don't understand how to get rid of. Do check for typos as I corrected on mine, but do not worry about things that are beyond easy comprehension. Okay, we're ready to move on to our newsletter project, so I'll see you there.